Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So in this one, I've decided to change things up now compared to previous years because as of right now, Edixel is getting a bit kind of picky about what kind of videos I can publish. So I've decided that from now on, I'm going to start doing Edixel style videos. And these videos are kind of um, very similar to actual past exam papers, except I've sort of modified them and sort of switched them up around. And either I've changed the questions, modified it, or even create brand new ones. So I hope you guys enjoyed this next video series. There's going to be four sets and in this video you're checking out set one. So check out my playlist and let me know what you guys think. So without further ado guys, let's jump straight in. So Brendan, Asher and Julie share some money in the ratios of three to two to six. So this means that Brendan gets three parts of the money, Asher gets two parts and Julie gets six. Now, the total amount of money that Ash and Julie receives, that is the last two parts by the way, is $36. Work out the amount of money that Brendan receives. Now, when you look at these kind of ratio problems, always look at the total amount and try and relate it to the ratios. And in this case, Ash and Julie represents the last two parts, right? It tells us that the total, in other words, both parts, so 2 plus 6, which is 8 parts, must be equal to the $36. So to get every single part, we should try and find one part. So this means that one part can be found if we divide 36 by 8. And if you do that, guys, you should get 4.5 or $4.50. dollars So for Brendan, and we know that Brendan receives three parts, that means what we need to do is now multiply our result by 3. And when you do that, guys, you should get an amount of $13.50. And that's it. That's your one done. Now for number two. They want us to show that this multiplication equals the right hand side. Now, as usual, guys, you cannot put this in your calculator straight away because you need to show some steps. Now, what I would do, guys, is always rewrite this in improper fraction. So to change 3 and 1 fifth into improper fraction, I would multiply 3 with 5, which will give us 15, and add to the 1, and it will give us 16. So it will be 16 over 5. And for the second fraction, do the same thing. 2 times A is 16. 16 plus 5 is 21, so it's 21 over 8. So the way I would approach this is multiply these head on and write 16 times 21 in the calculator, and this should give us 336, and then 5 times 8, which is 40. Now I would put this in the calculator exactly as I see it 336 over 40, and this will simplify automatically to 42 over 5. So no thinking required. And because you have literally one more step to go from here to the result, just write the answer directly and just write 8 2 fifths. And if you guys are not sure if there's anything you should write, you can put in bracket shown or something just to be clear that you've reached the result. And yeah, that's 2 done. So for number 3, we need to make A the subject of D equals G plus 2AC. Okay, so to do this guys, you have to first move every single variable that isn't touching A. So let's move G across. So we move G across, we have to subtract it. So it'll be D minus G equals 2AC. And to separate the 2 and C from the A, because they're all multiplied, we need to divide them away. So dividing 2C, you're now going to get D minus G over 2C. And now you're just left with A. And that's the result, guys. So you can write it neatly as A equals D minus G over 2C. Now for part B, we got to factorize fully 9EF minus 12F. So to factorize, it just essentially means you got to divide both of these terms by common factors, yeah? Numbers and letters, by the way. So for the numbers, we can look at 9 and 12, and we can kind of see that they're both in the 3 times table. So this means we're going to whip out a 3 outside, some bracket. And now we look at the letters, well, they both have an F, so we can whip out F as well. And then we write a bracket like this, and we ask ourselves, okay, so what is 9EF divided by 3F? Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3, you still go on E, and F divided by F cancels out, so there's no F. Then you write a minus sign, then we say, okay, 12 divided by 3 is 4, and F divided by F is gone. So this is your final result. <clears throat> now for part C, they want us to expand and simplify that double bracket. So for these cases, you always do term by term when you multiply. So it's going to be X times X x times minus 5 and then 2 times x 2 times minus 5 so when you do that x times x is x squared x times minus 5 is minus 5x 2 times x is plus 2x 
And lastly, 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. And for these quadratics, you always have to try and simplify the, the, the middle terms, yeah? So this means that minus 5x plus 2x, if you just put minus 5 plus 2 in your calculator, you should get a minus 3x. And that means our final result is therefore x squared minus 3x minus 10. And lastly, for part D, I think that's the last one, yep. Simplify fully this fraction. Now, when you're multiplying terms that have powers, like with the same bases like n, you just simply add the powers, yeah? So n to the 4 times n to the 7. If you add up 4 and 7, you get n to the 11. And you still got n to the 5 below. When you divide, you subtract the powers. So 11 take away 5 is going to give us n to the 6. And that's it, guys. That's 3 done. Okay, for number four, we're given three different sets here. Yeah? So we've got B for blues, and they use the letters B, L, U, E. G is gray, G, R, E, Y, and W is white, W, H, I, T, E. Now, this question wants us to list all the members of the set where B unites with G. So this is a union sign, and this little bridge end sign is an intersection. So what they have in common. So for the uniting thing, we just write every single letter that they appear in both B and G. Well, if we look at both sets, they literally have a B, L, U, E, and a G, R, E, Y. What you do, however, is you don't repeat the letters. So what I would do, I'll say, okay, the result is going to be a B, L, U, E, and they also have a G, an R, but I'm not going to repeat the E and a Y. So you just literally list every single letter in both sets. And for the second part, we need to find the, the members of the set which intersect between W and not G. Now, to understand not G, it's better to firstly work out what is the intersection between W and G to get a better understanding. Well, when we look at the intersection between both, we look at the common elements. So looking at the gray and the dark and the white, they both have the letter E. So this implies that the intersection between white and not G would be what it doesn't have. Well, it doesn't have a W. H, I, and T. So that'll be your answer for part two. It'll be W, H, I, and T. Okay. Now, for the last part, it says Serena writes down the statement B intersecting with G, intersecting with W are all empty. In other words, there is nothing in common between them. Just looking at all the three um, sets, we find out that all of them have the letter E. So this is false. Okay. In fact, they all have an E. And that's it. We're done for number four. Okay, question five. So the diagram shows UN's garden. Now, this garden is in the shape of a semicircle radius 7.2 meters. Okay. Now, UN is going to cover his garden with grass seed. UN has 12 boxes of grass seed, and each box contains enough seed to cover about 6 meters squared of the garden. Well, does he have enough grass seed for his garden? Show your work in. Okay, so for these kind of questions, the most important element is to always find out firstly how big the garden is. So what is the area of the garden? Well, because we know it's a semicircle, this is essentially half the area of a circle. We need to remember that the area of a circle is pi r squared. Because we're dealing with the half, the half the circle, we're going to divide the result by 2. We know that the radius is 7.2 meters. So we're just going to plug in 7.2 for r. So our area is actually going to be pi times 7.2 squared all over 2. Now, when you put this in the calculator, guys, you should get an area of about 81.43 meters squared. Now, we know that UN has 12 boxes of grass seed, and each of those box um, has enough seed to cover 6 meters. So that means 12 times 6 is actually 72 meters squared. So he's, he could only cover 72 meters squared. Now the question asked if this is enough. Well, it's actually not enough because he needs 81. So the answer would just be no because 72 is way less than 81.43. Now for question 6, they want us to solve this quadratic equation which is set to 0 and show clear algebraic working. Now guys, this is just a straight up um, standard quadratic formula based question. All I recommend is that you guys use the quadratic formula. Now, the quadratic formula looks a bit like this. We always say that x equals minus b plus minus uh, the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And all of this is always over 
A. Now, what are these layers? Well, these layers A, B, C are actually the values in front of the x squared, the x, and the constant. So we say that, okay, A is 1, which is the value of the coefficient of x squared. B is going to be equal to minus 5, which is the coefficient of x. And C is the constant of minus 36. And all you guys have to do is literally plug these values in into the formula. So you're going to get something like, well, minus B, you end up becoming plus 5, plus minus the square root. B squared is minus 5 squared, which is 25, minus 4 times A, which is 1, times minus 36. Now, all of this is over 2 times 1. Now, when you put this in your calculator, because you don't have a plus minus button in your calculators, you would first use the plus button. So replace plus minus with plus, and then you'll get a result of x equals 9. Or if you put a negative sign, you'll get a result of x equals minus 4. And these are your two answers, guys. And for 7, it says in the sale, the normal price of a hat is reduced by 15%. The sale price of the hat is 20.40 euros. Work out the normal price of the hat. Okay, for these questions, because you're dealing with price reduction and percentages, we always use this very nice formula we've been using for a while. And I call it the OVNV formula. This tells us that first you have the original value and it either increases or decreases by some rate and you'll get a new value. Because we know that the normal price of a hat is reduced, we're going to use the negative sign. And R is going to be our 15%. And we know that the new price, i.e. the sale price, is 20.4. So our formula is now going to look like OV bracket 1 minus 15%. Well, 15% is the same as 0 0.15. And we know that the new value is now 20.40 euros. And all you literally have to do, guys, is just make OV the subject. And to do that, we just divide this bracket across. So you're going to have OV equals 20.40 over, well, 1 minus 0 0.15 is actually 0 0.85. And then put this in your calculator, guys, and you're going to get an actual normal price of 24 euros. And that's it. Okay, question eight. So five children are playing on a trampoline. Now, the mean weight of the five children is 28 kg. So before we read on, this implies that because every single child is about 28 kg, this means that the total of five children is actually five times 28 kg. And doing that will give you a total weight of 140 kg for those five children. For the second part, it says two of the children get off the trampoline. Now, the mean weight of these two children is 26.5. So again, because there's two of them and they average 26.5, on, if you double that, you're going to get a total weight of 53 kg for both children. Work out the mean weight of the three children who remain on trampoline. So in other words, the difference between these two. So if I had to subtract these two results, we'll find out that the, the weight of the three children was actually the difference between 140 and 53, which is 87 kg. Now, if I had to divide that by three, well, actually it turns out that the mean weight of each of those children, or well, the three children that remain in trampoline, was 29 kg. And that's it guys, that's this question done.